Yeah, okay. It's early on a Wednesday morning. They leave to develop the nasty habit of waking up 10 to 20 minutes before your alarm rings. Fortunately, today is no exception. You lay in bed, each minute ticking closer and closer to wake up time, and passing on a swelling wave of ever encroaching dread. <coughs> Sooner than you like your alarm bell blares with caustic in inevitability. You frantically pound the snooze button and then retreat under your blankets as if the warmth of your comforter can shield you from the passage of time. You almost always have difficulty rising from bed, but today that simple task seems nothing short of a Herculean. After several snooze cycles, you decide that you just can't deal with work today. You're incapable of even rousing yourself from bread, let alone going to work and having to force yourself to a work day. Not to mention you snooze so many times that it would be impossible to make it on time now anyways. What do you do? No, no, no. I'll leave early. In spite of the fact that your body is actively fighting you literally every step of the way, you somehow manage to drag yourself out of bed and make your way into work. Hmm. <coughs> That's cool. Though... Though when you wake up the simple act of being even physically present and just don't seem like an impossibility, you're not surprised that you're unable to push to push through the day. You're probably enjoying or even in, or indeed even really coping with the dullness of your job today. We seem to have slipped in a trance like state of automation and time is nevertheless passing. Eventually the end of the day rolls around and you head home. Utterly exhausted but at the same time almost proud of yourself for having stuck it out. Yeah, cause I'm the boss. Do this cause shit. It's static. Well, that made it look like it's static. It's 2 a.m. on a Sunday, and you have work in the morning. You roll over to see the sickly green glow of the time displayed on your LED alarm clock, and then an exasperated sigh. You've been trying to fall asleep for over three hours now to no avail. Oh, that happens to me sometimes. Every time your head tilts, hits the pillow, you're overcome with anxious thoughts that wrap themselves around each other. Worries about your job lead to you to worries about your future, lead to worries about your very identity. And you're unable to shake them off long enough to doze off. Your eyes won't even stay shut as your mind races to imagine scenarios going horribly wrong, which will probably attribute to your general worthlessness. Your thoughts run too fast for you to come to a satisfying conclusion on any one of them. Your room is completely silent, but the silence is given way to a loud static noise rattling around inside your head. Your heart beats loudly and you wonder if it's breathing a little too fast. You worry that if you focus too strongly on your racing heart, you'll freak yourself out hard enough that you have a race that you have a heart attack. You have to be awake for work in a mere eight hours. You know that your work is only so much worse on only a few hours sleep. Holy shit. Hugs, boson. Couldn't think of a better name is, could ya? Something called the Higgs boson. Some little particle that I've got no idea about. <coughs> you get out of bed and head to your desk, laying in bed, but nothing with your thoughts to keep you company. It makes you feel like you're going insane. The harshness of the light coming from your screen makes you squint as you turn it on. It's like how often you find yourself in this exact situation. There have been so many nights lately just like this. You begin reading a news story in front of you. You're, you're an online friend of yours. I am you. Attic. You're up. Played again, I see. Yeah, can't sleep again. Thinking too much again. Thinking. You guessed it. Wanna talk about it? You end up talking with Attic for quite some time without even feeling. He's always been easy to talk to about personal matters. The added security of talking online helps. You want to rethink what you say as you type it out and check it before you send it out. It helps you gather your thoughts and you find it less intimidating in a way to type it all into a prompt and say it out loud. I don't want to be that guy who thinks they can diagnose something because I need to read a Wikipedia article, but it kind of sounds like you might have depression. You should talk to someone about that, like a doctor. You pause. Are you really that transparent, or is it that you've gotten used to talking about your feelings at this point? When insomnia makes you a little paranoid, but you shake it off. Attic, we can do something, research, and see if there's a good doctor near you. 
It's not like you're going back to sleep anytime soon anyway. Might as well do something while you're awake. Smiley face. You, this is just a low night. I'm normally able to sleep and I don't have depression. But thanks for your concern. No, that's okay. Actually... I don't know, man, because I've already been open with him just then. But I actually have talked to someone about it. This Amanda girl. Oh, okay, I'm glad you're talking and taking that step. I've heard it's not an easy one. I know people kind of suck at understanding this sort of stuff sometimes, but there's nothing wrong with having depression. You stupid. There's everything wrong with having, with having depression. People die from depression. What is there not wrong about it? Oh my god, this kid's stupid. I would uh, bad, bad decision talking to him. Well, you wouldn't be ashamed to have bronchitis or something, so there's no reason to be ashamed if your brain's that sick instead. Hmm, good analogy. You spend a few more minutes talking with Eric about your therapy and your feelings about it. He's incredibly supportive and you're happy to find you have a confid confidant. Is that how you say it? How do you say it? How do you say it? Confident. Okay. That understands your illness and is willing to lend an ear when you're having nights like this. A little while later, you fall back into bed, get in tow, get in tow, and find it easier to drift off to sleep. Even in therapy, you know you're still gonna have nights like these sometimes. It's good to know you have a friend who will help you carry things. That's nice. That's nice. That's nice. That's nice. Door handle? Or is that a cup? It's a chilly Thursday night. Bro, this weather's retarded. <clears throat> And you've just gotten off work. This is felt like one of the longest days you've faced in recent memory. Ooh, this guy lives. America's pretty weird. The days are long and short. Mm, mm, mm. It's odd. You don't have that in Australia. Even though nothing exceptional had happened, a ton of minor things kept going wrong, and co workers had tried your patience throughout the day. You considered leaving work early, but the last thing you wanted to do was deal with your insufferable boss on top of everything else. Right. <coughs> You're lost in thought on the commute home, and your feelings of frustration, both in your life and the world around you, build as you run into minor annoyances, just like. Someone fun being into you really hard as they walk by. Walk by. By the time you get home, you're exhausted. And remember that these feelings were the ones you identified as a negative feedback loop with your therapist. These pent up feelings aren't dying down and are eating at you. You open the door of your, your front door and stay at your apartment. An overwhelming feeling of exhaustion overcomes you. Man, this guy really likes your apartment, bro. And you feel like your energy levels are low enough that you'll actually settle into a single. Tonight. Right, number three. Alright. <clears throat> you better just listen to people for a while. You think resignedly, resignedly, or resignedly, you do account of stop playing video games. Oh, yeah, cuz I like this guy. But you can't seem to focus on what's happening on screen. You cycle through a few different games, but tonight, everything seems either too tedious or too aggravating for you to play for more than a few minutes. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. He's, he's got a couple of games, doesn't he? A few of your online friends invite you to play a game with them, but the prospect of having to talk, let alone cooperate with the people, seems incredibly unpleasant. You decide to give the video games a rest for the evening, though you worry that you've offended your online friends and your next conversation will be awkward because of it giving you yet another source of stress to weigh down on you tonight. You boot up Netflix and load cycle through some of your favourite shows or movies that you'd flagged as wanting to come back to. But again, nothing seems to be able to hold your attention. You feel what can only be described as mentally fidgety, like there's an unscratchable itch somewhere in your brain that's becoming increasingly hard to ignore. You send off a quick text to Alex, hoping that conversation will help pull you out of your head for enough to relax. But you know, she's in class night. The chances of her replying are slim. <coughs> you head into the kitchen for food and come out with not so much a sandwich as uh, peanut butter on two pieces of bread. You pace anxiously around your apartment while you eat, irritated both by whatever this nerve wracking feeling is and your inability. And why? You mean your inability to just ignore it and unwind. <gasps> they made a mistake! They're bloody assholes! Okay, after a few more sandwiches, oh, 
and an overly long shower oh, you're gonna get a nice bill for that you'll finally have more stress shouldn't have done that you'll finally able to settle down enough to head off to bed Whew. I'm still depressed it was an utterly nondescript Wednesday afternoon the type of hour of afternoon that would completely fade from memory unless one made an active effort to preserve it as has become routine on Wednesdays you're sitting on the couch in Dr. Melville's office Cleo Miles advice she begins this session by breaking her characteristic therapist silence and begin speaking up right away. Oh, that's cool. I wanted to start saying, I think it's great that you decided to come see me. It's an incredibly important first step she begins. I wanted to take some time today to talk to you about the possibility of supplementing us or substituting your treatment with me with medication. What is drugs going to substitute person? Is that what you're saying now? I don't like this doctor. The mention of medication makes your ears perk up. You feel your heart rate rate increase. Oh, 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 oh. be careful, man! You've got high blood high blood pressure. It means heart attack. Too much stress. Many people find it adding a pharmacological to their treatment to be very helpful. And some even prefer to take drugs, completely eliminating the need to visit a therapist at all. Providing you rely on your support network and so reaching out to people. I'd prefer it if we keep stalking, talking, not stalking. Should you choose to start medication, so that I can monitor your progress and adjust as needed. But the choice is ultimately yours. I just wanted to run the option to you. <gasps> I have all the options open to me. Oh my god, I'm so happy now. Holy shit, I don't give a shit what this doctor says. Oh my god, I'm just gonna choose one. Okay, okay. Random click. Oh, damn, I was gonna click too. Anyway. Medical medication makes you feel somehow even more embarrassed and defective. In fact, you realize that much of your experience with therapy has been fighting off these creepy feelings of inadequacy. You don't have a problem with, with Dr. Mel Melville per se. She's nice enough and you certainly don't dislike her. But the idea of having to talk to a complete stranger about how screwed up you feel has always been an uncomfortable hurdle that you've been struggling with. In spite of these feelings, your thoughts drift back towards Amanda as she took time out of her busy life had potentially uncomfortable conversation of her own to forward this to forward you this information. You worry that to quit going to therapy would, more than anything else, be letting Amanda down in a huge way. And you, you desperately wish to avoid that level of disappointment. You think that maybe Dr. Melville's suggestion is somewhat fortuitous. You, you now you can remove yourself from the uncomfortable position oh or to or decide on that word from Assassin's Creed 4. You play games for a reason, okay? English, cuz. Now you can remove yourself from the uncomfortable position the therapy session put you in, but you can do it without feeling like you're totally letting Amanda down. Okay. Right. I took some drugs, didn't I? I probably didn't get addicted to these depression drugs. It's a Wednesday evening and you're visiting a parent's house for today. Alright, for a holiday, not for today. Play I can't read these A's. It's one of the handful of times during the year you drive out to visit your old home and you've seen random people that you've gone to school with around town. Whenever bugging in the, the usual short version of what you've done since graduating our exchange. I've gone through a few of these today and I've been very aware of how much you feel you haven't accomplished. When you were in high school you had much larger plans. You feel like you failed to manifest most of them. Even if you had managed to, you've largely lost interest in what you thought you wanted to do growing up. Now, you're not really sure what you want to do, and you felt like you're lacking the ambition or drive to figure it out. Everyone you've caught up with seems to so much happier than you. They feel like they've got their lives all figured out, and you've kind of been feeling like a failure by comparison. Your brother Malcolm arrives with his wife in tow shortly before you all sit down to dinner. He's been travelling for his job lately, and you haven't seen him since the day he picked you up from the dentist. Your parents haven't seen him since before then. During dinner, they all catch up and Malcolm talks about the amazing things he's done on the road. Oh, 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 oh. I thought he went by boat. Oh, oh. <coughs> Your mother turns to you and asks you what you've been up to since the last... since you've seen them last. Oh, same old, same old, you say. Nothing really going on. Your mother makes a face. Oh, nothing new? How long have you been staying at that job of yours? What do you say? Uh, I'm gonna go to the bathroom, okay, cause, yeah, hey, explain everything inside you want to run away, exactly the reason why I want to go to the bath bathroom, I don't want everything to run away on the chair, okay, 
I've had this conversation with her enough to know that anything you can say would either be a lie or would result in a lecture. Spending the day feeling like you were a failure already, you can't really handle more of the same from your family, regardless of how well they mean. Actually, I'll be right back. I have to use the restroom. Restroom, you've got a bloody toilet, alright? Shut your fancy language. You're with your family now. You're. It's, it's alright. <coughs> oh, wait, no, this guy's depressed. I gotta remember that. You excuse yourself from the table. Just. Excuse me. Okay, hell, excuse me. Alright. Despite not actually having to use the facilities and head to the bathroom, you lock the door behind you and flip down the toilet lid. Take a seat and rest your head in your hands. You take a few deep breaths as your mind runs through its typical self deprecate What? Deprecate. Oh, deprecating the scripts. Though you're still feeling as though it's a moment of relief. That's nice. Feel relief in the toilet. Even though you love your family, you really feel like they don't know you at all sometimes and this makes them exhausting to be around on nights like this. You wish you could just tell them what you're feeling. Yes, and that's sometimes it feels like you're lost in the woods. Why do they say you're lost in the woods? Seriously, the only thing that gets lost in the wood is bloody ants. Say lost in the desert or something, that makes more sense. Alright? Unless you're a camel, you don't get lost in the desert. Anyway, and that you were to drop dead in your apartment, the world wouldn't notice. Holy shit. Your girlfriend hasn't called in a while. You want to make her understand that more often than not, you feel like an alien. Like there isn't anywhere in this world that feels like a place where you belong. And you have no idea how to fix it or what to do. You wish you could find the words so they would understand you, but... You end up feeling like an outsider instead. Instead, you decide to remove yourself from the situation and calm down. You couldn't see a resolution where attempting those things would work. You need a moment of space instead. You gotta knock on the door. An Arkham voice comes through the... Hey, kiddo, you alright in there? You've been in there for a while. Yeah, I was just feeling a little sick. Yeah, well, if there's anything I can get you, let me know. They're about to say fire though, if you feel enough to. Yeah, I'll be here in a minute. Malcolm is quiet for a moment. Hey, just so you know, I'm really proud of you. And for what, man? I'm, I'm, yeah. He is, he is big for to just walk away from the door and splash some water on, on your face before leaving to rejoin your family. If you don't, I have... If, <clears throat> if this guy doesn't have uh, yeah, any, a tap in his... in the toilet, then I wonder what water he used. Uh, <clears throat> What's that? Handkerchief is smoking. What is that? That looks retarded. It's a rainy night, okay? You're hurrying through the rain to Alex's apartment at her behest. Ah, right. The pace is quick. The rain is steadily soaking up your pan to legs as you traverse the town. It's darkening your already poor mood. Why? I like going rain. It's pretty awesome. You can get wet in the rain sometime, purposely. The call came while you were at home after a day of dealing with abnormally frustrating people. You spent the afternoon trying to unwind and get some work on, on your project done. As Gordon interrupted running off, trying to make progress, get frustrated and not make any progress, having a harder time to make progress due to frustration, repeat loops, and you haven't fully shaken off the feeling of being annoyed with yourself from it yet. You knock on her door and the third knock, hear her voice call from further in the apartment to come in. As you cross the thresh oh, threshold, cause Dripping rainwater all the way, you notice the lights are turned down very low in the apartment. Oh. You squint to navigate as you clutch onto your damp umbrella, but end up hitting your shin on the side table, mumbling profanity under your breath. Oh. <laughs> you barely make out Alex emerging from the hallway, clad in what looks like to be a robe with bare skin of her legs peering out underneath. Why don't you come in and uh, warm up? She asks in her designated, slightly cheesy, sexy voice. What a new. After a bit of silence, she tastes more naturally. My roommates are out of town this weekend, so I thought it might be nice to have uh, a little fun while they're away. You appreciate her affection, but you're too wrapped up in your negative feedback loops to be in the mood right now. What do you do? Shit. Hold on, cuz I'll be back.